Calgary has urban sprawl. No, it doesn't. Yeah, occasionally I get fired up with the urban sprawl extremists in Calgary. You know, those group of individuals who have their own formula that suggests they're paying for growth in Calgary. They argue against City of Calgary Council approving any more new suburban neighborhoods to be built. I mean, I wouldn't be as annoyed with them since I typically ignore their theatrics. Except this time. Now the crusade against complete communities with a variety of home types, businesses, job opportunities, and more is climate change. <laughs> yes, yes, they go for every reason to not progress anything today. Now for me, my background is in home building and land development, and that's over 33 years now. I mean, we're a small but proud industry in Calgary, which combined with our colleagues around the province, you know, we directly or indirectly employ up to 200,000 people. We're the third largest industry contributing to the provincial GDP and labor force and an average of around 26,000 homes are built in the province each year. That includes everything from single family homes to attached or detached homes with garages to condominiums and apartments to townhomes and semi-detached homes. Now, Shortly after I started my career, I had to learn to take this criticism as the, the sprawl extremists reared their heads. <gasps> I mean, I remember the first time I was confronted in an arts function by a lady who told me I should be ashamed for destroying farmland. I was taken back. Since I knew that the farmers who held that land for generations had anticipated selling it for development as the seed grew, this was their golden egg for retirement and or the opportunity to move further away from the city to start over with the means to do so. Now, the next morning I mentioned this to my father and some of, uh, some of our favorite developers at a meeting, and I learned that this was quite common. In fact, I began to learn more about how important suburbia, rather, was to Calvarians wanting a new law. But how suburbia contributes to the economy by way of taxes, jobs, opportunities, and growth. Now, I could talk about the development costs, but I only have so many words here. And my friend, Mike Thomas, has written about this extensively, and I'd recommend that you read some of his, uh, some of his articles in the Westridge Standard. In fact, Mike's insight into some planners and the arrogance that they have towards city growth and their outdated sprawl ideology would have readers absolutely stunned. Yes, yes, yes. You pay their salary, and they're going to tell you how to live? So where am I going with this? To restore affordability, Canada's 3.5 million housing unit gap needs to be closed and quick. I mean, Alberta itself could be behind 20 to 30,000 homes already with a need for almost 1 million plus homes. As projections suggest, our province could double in population up to 9 million people in 25 years. We're already seeing it. But I'd rather be ahead of the curve than behind it. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, that's a lot to make up when the yearly capacity to build is 26,000 homes. I mean, that's leaving us in an unnecessary housing crisis. And with costs growing, we're watching affordability erode for the satisfaction of a few. Like I'd mentioned, I've seen that happen too many times with these extremists, and they rattle the chains of city councillors, administration, and media in their fight against suburban neighborhoods. I mean, years ago, the argument was that the inner city was paying for suburban growth. How? When everything contained in a new subdivision is paid for by the homeowners who buy a home there. I mean, millions of dollars in lot levies are prepaid and then to the municipality and dedications of parkland, school sites, environmental reserves. They're all forfeit without compensation to the developer or the end purchasers. The service connections need to be added, and upgrades to those services are made by the city. But the end user pays for that through property taxes at the same rate everybody in the city does. Now, they'll, they argue against new suburban neighborhoods because of climate change. And yet new suburbia is much more efficient walkable and environmentally conscious with their street lights, community gardens, essential services, shopping, and more. 
And there have been innovations in every product in the home, from HVAC to windows to insulation to air quality. If these individuals argue against suburbia, would like they do something for the environment, please? Maybe they could subdivide their current home lot so they could be as dense as new communities or upgrade their homes to be as efficient as the new ones are. Maybe it shouldn't be a new policy or better yet, a law that they have to do this after 30 years of living in their current home. So the next time one of the sprawl extremists tries to include their opinion into the way you and your family are living, here are a few questions you can ask them. Where do you live? Do you own or rent? What does it cost to redevelop in the inner city or belt line in Calgary? No, it's not zero dollars. Or my favorite, when is the last time you visited suburbia? Most couldn't answer these questions, at least not honestly. You see, fact always outweighs fiction. <laughs>Hey, did you guys enjoy this video? Hey, hey, tap the subscribe button now.